Good afternoon, you guys. So I just finished looking at your plot charts from the necklace, which you were supposed to fill out. Remember, we looked at it for the interlopers. We talked about it together. And then I asked you to go through and fill it out for yourself uh, based on the necklace. But there's clearly some confusion. So I want to go back here and try and explain this a little bit. You have to think of stories as timelines because a lot of you had your events kind of all mixed up and jumbled. Think of it as a timeline. Look, the exposition is usually at the beginning. Does this story take place in outer space? You should know within the first paragraph or the first page if the story takes place in outer space. Is the story about cavemen living 10,000 years ago? Within the first few moments of reading a story, you should know if it's about cavemen. Is it a modern story about a baseball player? You're probably going to know if that's the case in the first few pages. Is it about driving a race car? You're gonna know in the first few pages. That's the exposition. Who are the main characters? Usually, not always, but usually the first character that's introduced is going to be the main character. Where are they? Are they in San Diego? Are they in outer space, like I said? Are they on a boat in the middle of the ocean? You might not have a specific name of a place, but you're gonna know generally where they are. For example, at home right now, I'm reading a book and it does not ever give a name of a city. I have no idea what city or what country the story ever takes place in, but it doesn't really matter because the people spend most of their time in an insane asylum. They're not insane, but the point is that's where they are. The exposition tells me where they are. And so I don't need to know the country or the state or the year necessarily. The point is the exposition, the beginning of the story tells me who, where, and when. Somewhere at the beginning of the story, at the beginning of the story, there's going to be a conflict. That's what drives the whole rest of the story. If you didn't get to the conflict until the end of the story, you would have read very boring pages where the characters are just like, life is good. Today's a good day. Life is because if it's just good, then there's no conflict. There's nothing happening. The conflict happens at the beginning. So, when you identify the conflict, you have to think, what in the beginning of the story changed things? What caused the characters to behave differently? Okay. The rising action is in that middle part of the story where things build up and they get more and more interesting. Now, as I have said before, you are not, you are not limited to only three events of rising action. There could be many events of rising action. Generally, we narrow it down to the biggest, most important events. If you're reading a 900 page book, there's going to be a lot of rising action. Okay. There might actually be a couple of different conflicts as well. We're not going to delve too far into that. But the point is, if you're reading a short story, there's a few events of rising action but we're limiting ourselves here to just a couple. Now look where the climax is. The climax is definitely getting towards the end of the story. Remember, if we're thinking about a timeline, time is moving from the beginning to the end. The climax kind of towards the end. It's, it's maybe past the middle part, okay? It's the really big, interesting, surprising event that's super exciting. If you like watching the Marvel movies, the climax is always going to be when all the superheroes show up and they're all battling the bad guy. That's just how it works. Okay. Everything else led up to that main big battle. That's the climax. So when we're talking about the short stories, what is the most exciting, the most interesting, the most surprising? What part of the story draws your interest the most? And then after that, you get the falling action. Again, in short stories, sometimes that falling action is very quick. It can be as quick as a sentence or a short paragraph. Sometimes in short stories, there's not a lot of falling action. In other novels, there's going to be some more 
falling action. In movies, there's usually some falling action at the end as the story starts to wrap up. The character goes home, the character, you know, rebuilds their home, they find old friendships and they start to become friends again. And then of course the resolution, what happens to the main characters? How does the story end? What happens at the end? All right, so think of it a timeline. So I'm gonna move on now. We talked about the plot chart line here, right? We talked about how things go up and then down. That's what the plot chart looks like. It's always gonna be how people talk about the plot chart, but you have to keep in mind, that time is moving this direction. So this is the first thing, the second thing, the third thing, the fourth thing, the fifth thing, sixth thing, seventh thing, however many things you want to identify, they're going in order of time, right? Because if time is going from the beginning of the story here, to the end of the story here, and time is moving this direction, you have all of these events falling in order. That's how the plot chart works. They are all in order, sequential order. All right, I've made a mess of my page here. So when we look at these terms that we just talked about, the exposition is at the beginning, the conflict is in the beginning section. Remember, we're looking at the time here. The conflict's at the beginning. The event, 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 climax, falling action, resolution. Okay? This is the first thing. This would be the last thing. So talking about following, following things in order. All right. Let's take a look at the necklace specifically. Okay? How can you fill in this chart? Because this was your task. So... Here's my example. Matilda, Mr. LaSalle, Mrs. Forestier. Those are the only characters. You had to list all three. Where were they? They were in Paris. The story makes that clear. Some of you, head scratcher, said um, a, a village. And I have no idea where you got the idea they're from a village. But it's clear they are in Paris. It says a number of times they're in Paris. And long ago, because it's a horror draw and carriage, the timing doesn't really matter. Um, not a huge part, but we can say long ago. All right, the conflict, what changes things? Matilda thinks she deserves a fancy life. That's kind of the conflict. She is the one sitting there all the time thinking, I need a fancy life. She's always disappointed. And at the beginning of the story, she dreams of a fancy life. And then her husband brings her the invitation to the fancy life. And remember, if we're looking at a timeline, this is the first event second event, third event, fourth event. Then she needs money for the fancy dress. So that's gonna be our fifth event. Now, we could break these up into two different things, right? These are kind of different things. So we could add a whole nother rising action box here if we wanted. Um, I didn't ask you to do that, but the point is putting things in order. So she borrows the fancy necklace, she goes to the party, okay? and then she loses the necklace. That's the exciting part. She what? She lost her friend's necklace. Her husband goes out and looks for it all night long. And then they have to start taking out loans. And so these events would kind of be going along here. And the story says they spent 10 years paying off the debt. And that's how the story's kind of falling down. Then we get to the end. How does the story end? Caesar old friend finds out the necklace was a fake and that's where you get the big emoji there. Okay. That's a very basic idea of what your plot chart should look like. Okay. Um, doesn't have to be exactly like this. There's some room for variation. I will allow certain different ideas, but basically this is what it should look like. So if you got it right, thumbs up. If you got it wrong, let's do it again. Let's fix it. All right. I know that I talked for a very long time, but I think that's hopefully going to help you out. So sayonara for now.